Hi there, welcome <laughs> welcome back to uh, the Call to Cinema. If you saw my video that was up here for like two minutes before, uh, I gotta apologize. So I had planned to do a video here tonight with, uh, with Mr. Logan Toxic. And uh, unfortunately there were some technical issues with uh, getting that video done. And we worked on it for quite a while trying to figure it out. Uh, but unfortunately, um, Logan is, uh, is taking care of his, hey Mary, is taking care of his little one right now. So I think he's going to drop in in a little bit. Uh, but uh, I'm going to have him on sometime next week and we're going to like do a live stream together. Uh, but I'm going to have to use my computer for that because apparently can't do that on the iPad. I need some extra equipment for that. Uh, here I am. I apologize, but it, we worked on we worked on some stuff and we just got talking as, as well. It's been a while since I spoke to Logan. So uh, that was neat as, as well. Hey there, Emily. I apologize. Uh, I forgot to get my thing from up, from upstairs. I'm going to grab it in a second. So, the severance sale is happening. It is happening at 11:59 Eastern Standard Time, and uh, there was a uh, a guy on here. I think his name's Joe, actually. Uh, and I got to give him credit because I had I, I thought it was going to be 11:59 uh, PST. Hey there, guys. Uh, but Joe Grubinski, anyway, he came in and he said, you know, I want to make sure that people like know the sale is Eastern Standard Time. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Uh, so I don't think he's watching, but even if, if he is, Joe, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. <laughs> but I'm finally back. And uh, <laughs> still, hair still messy, but I, I desperately need a haircut. It's just having to get it around. So who's excited for the Severn sale? Who's like super excited for this? Thank you, Chris. Who's excited for the Severn sale? Because me personally, I'm stoked. I got a, a list of top things that I think everybody should pick up. If you don't have it, I'm guessing a lot of you guys are going to be getting the new stuff. And they announced the last of the secret releases. I really didn't think that they were going to announce anything until the sale. Like I thought the last secret rele title would be revealed on the sale, but no surprising me specifically really surprised me. They actually did up like a, uh, Hey there action. Uh, did up like a list, uh, the, uh very much the put out like a whole thing of like, okay, this is the secret Jess Franco title. So I was right. I was right. That it was Jess Franco. Uh, Going for the bundle with all the all the releases. No shirts and Spider Island bundle. Is there a Spider Island bundle now though? That's the thing. I don't think there's a Spider Island bundle. Because um, the Spider Island bundle sold out like a, a while back. And the thing you're going to notice on this on the sale and like to know right away is there you're going to see the new bundles, but you're not going to see many of the other bundles. And that's because they don't have bundles on sale during their uh, during their sales. The only bundles are the are the new bundles for the for the new stuff so remember those like for the monthly bundles you'll you'd see like with the t-shirt and stuff like that 30 left of the spot around a bundle oh i did not know that dennis so thanks for letting me know thanks for letting us all know by the way they're gonna have 10 copies of this and actually yes i did want to to mention that so if anybody did not yet get the hemisphere horror box set this is it right here this is very limited. This has been out of print for a while. They have, was it, he said 10? I think, yeah, I had it written down upstairs. But like 10 copies of, of this one left. And if you want to grab it, then, and look how cool this is. Look how sexy this is. It is super fun, Eric. I gotta, I gotta say. Like, you got like some, some great films and they're sexy black cases. Um, You got an awesome son, man. So 10 copies, man. Uh, it's going to go fast. That one's going to go super fast. There is 250 copies of Blood on Saints Class, limited edition. That's probably going to go pretty fast as well. Um, now, the Hemisphere box set, grab that. If that's one that you're looking at, um, the films on it, by the way, are Curse of the Vampire, The Blood Drinkers, which brilliantly, by, by the way, Brain of Blood, uh, the Black Cat and Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism. And you know who's in, in one of these movies? Christopher Lee is in one of these films. Yep, uh, I, I kid you not. 
you got Christopher Lee and Lex Barker, who played Tarzan. So that's actually kind of cool. So let me watch the Psycho Gogo -Go in anticipation. Not a bad film. Vi with Slip will be back. Ooh. Hey there, Richard. Now, the thing is that a lot of these are going to be kind of limited. And for if you're going in to get like something like The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward or, uh, or Satan's Slave or something like that, just know that those are still going to be full price. Because they're within the, for the last six months. It's when you get down to stuff like uh, like The Night Killer and Robo Wars and stuff like pre that, uh, and like the, the and uh, what's it, Beleth, the Demon of, of Incest, that one, that type of stuff, that, that'll that be on the sale. Pegnini Horror will be on the sale. Um, so you're going to get some really cool, exciting stuff. Amy, th thank you for coming in. And thank you guys for waiting for me for so long, too. What is up is the sale is coming up. I'm super excited, John. I'm, I'm, I got like a list of like some severance stuff here that we're going to look at. I tried to pick like a top seven list, but uh, right away, I got to say 10 of these, if you don't have it, it comes with a poster, like a mini poster, by the way, uh, just to let you know that this does come with a poster of this and uh, it's just over there. Tell you what, stick with me for a second. I'm going to go grab my pad because I wrote down on a piece of paper the other day and I did a video on this when I had the pad like in everything that's in the, that's going to be in, in the bundles and all that type of stuff the pricing so uh, if you got any questions on that I'm going to be able to answer that as well and I'm going to give you some some seven ideas uh, we're going to look at uh, at some different stuff we're going to have some fun with it what am I planning on getting I'm actually going to let you know Emily or some stuff I'm planning on getting anyway because I'm still up in the air on a couple of things but I I'm pretty sure Night Killer is Night Killer is going to be on the list. I'll be right back. Knowing that site was going down, I wrote everything down the other day. Hey! Watch the other night, Death Dream. Love that film. Bob Clark, man. Love anything Bob Clark. Got a list of four toes with alternatives. Dave, what's your list? First off, here's a question Who is getting some of the new stuff and who is focusing on older stuff that's that that's my question for you guys right now <laughs> that's it man Rick's doing a bit of both we all have our list <laughs> warlock's ready to go Ward. Now, Mrs. Ward is a great one. It's not going to be on sale, but it's, it is definitely a cool one to grab. Uh, one of the best jails of all time, in my opinion, actually. Frankie and Pals. That's going to be a very limited edition one. You're big on the Intervision stuff? And if you've got an older title that you're picking up, that you're looking at picking up, what's it going to be? What's your top older title? Like, I know some of you guys are going to go for the bundles. So you're going for a hold of beans.
on the Franco films. See, I'd like to give you more information on the Franco films, but I actually don't know the Franco films that are out there. Um, like, especially the last one that they, that they introduced. Uh, I, do, I don't know a lot about it. I know it's an 80s Franco film, so it's one of his, one of the kind of a, kind of a mid-tier one. When the Wind Blows, I don't know. Let me see. I don't think so, uh, Alan, but the peanut butter solution, if you don't have that one, that's going to be on the sale. It's 11.59 Eastern Standard Time, uh, so that's going to be interesting to, uh, to see when that, uh, when that comes up. So, things everybody's going to get during the sale, there's going to be like this convention-style lanyard, which they may have had. Looking for wax masks, excellent. That is definitely on sale. Uh, Pegnini Horror, is, that is definitely on sale, too. Lucio Fulci's Enigma. You know, Richard, I don't remember that film very well. Read the last comment. That's the thing. Sometimes I can't get back to the comments. <laughs> so I apologize. If I missed your comment, I, I, it's not showing up for me. Hey there, Trini. The ones that I'm looking at right now that I don't have, things like Night Killer, Robo War, Beast and Heat, uh, Paganini Horror, that's, that's like the top four on my list right now. I have, you know, that, not saying I'm going to get all these. Uh, it's going to depend on a lot of stuff. Now, I know, like, uh, for shipping-wise, depending on where you're at, the way it's going to work is that, and I got it all down here. Uh, if you're in the U.S., $100 or over, uh, shipping is free. Dennis there, like Canada, is $150 for free shipping. And international is $200. So Dennis was completely right. International shipping rates is $200. So I'm not sure where you're at, Cinematech. So if you're in Canada, it's $150. If you're over like in Ireland or England or something like that, then it's going to be two hundred dollars, and and over is going to be for free shipping. Do I have a favorite Intervision title? I do. It's uh, it's not going to be a surprise. It's Things. Things is definitely my favorite Intervision title because I think more than any other title that they've that they've put out on that label, it really solidifies exactly what what Intervision is. And uh, for those that are unaware, you new here. Uh, Things was a 1989 Canadian horror film, a Canucks exploitation film, and done on a on such such a low budget, uh, but it is so nuts and so insane and so mind numbing that you can't stop watching it. And there are going to be times when things are going to get so inept within that film that you're going to start laughing and. And you're, you're kind of not going to know why, but it's going to happen. Um, things has become kind of like a, a low Z. If you're a, like a, a bad movie film buff, a Z grader, uh, things is, are all intervision titles Z? Not really. I mean, like the, some people consider it. They're all intervision titles are like shot. They're shot on, you know, sh shot for video. That's, uh, that's, the, that's the thing for intervision. They weren't shot to go into a theater. Most of them, they were shot. To go straight to uh, straight to video, <laughs> murder, murder, lust. Uh, but definitely buy things. I definitely pick up things. If you've never picked up an intervision before, let that be your introduction. Beyond Seven Doors, another good one as well. I actually haven't got that one yet. That's one I do need to get. Actually, Brian, I gotta let Logan know because Logan was actually. Uh, concerned that there wasn't going to be like a like because he'd heard, heard that there wasn't going to be like a criterion sale uh, for uh, in July, so it'll be interesting to see. Blood on Satan's Claws on my list as well. I sold you on things, it's it's insane. Uh, let me let me grab it. Hold on. Like, I literally got it right here, and it's probably one of the most watched like movies in my collection. <laughs> Because everybody that comes to my house, we've got to watch with me. Uh, so if you ever came, you ever came to visit me, we'd probably sit and watch things now. Go mask and make the double feature, have some cool drinks. 
I hope your information is reliable too, because I don't want to see Bar Barnes and Noble loses a lot and a lot of revenue when they lose the Criterion sale. I know somebody else bought Barnes and Noble, but let's hope that they keep that going. Uh, if not, then it's going to be Criterion flash sales for people that collect Criterion, and uh, they're not as uh, as plentiful or, or as like uh, kind of like long. Uh, the Barnes and Noble Criterion sale usually goes on for a month. All right, but this is things. Oh yeah, Barnes & Noble's been bought out. I'm pretty, I'm 90% certain that the Barnes & Noble's actually bought out. That's the reason. So this is Things. It's the Intervision title. Like, how can you not want to see this movie right here? Look at that mullet. That's a mullet of action. So what I love, so this, these are the special features. And there's one thing that I got to, I got to put like a special emphasis on. Because as crazy as this movie is, some of the special features are just as crazy. Hey there, Marvel fan. And um, anybody that owns this movie knows exactly what I'm talking about. So they say, testimonial on things. Hey, Brian. Um, this is Brian Sauer from Just to This Podcast and Pure Cinema, which you guys should be listening to. We just did one. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and I'm going to say this, Brian. I think it's our best collaboration. Uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, but I do. I, I think we got, we got a flow going there, man. Barnes & Noble got bought out. Yeah. But, see, between the UK and Canada, we saved you, man. <laughs> we saved Barnes & Noble and we saved, was it FYE or something like that? Because Canada bought out, like, I think FYE and uh, like company in Canada, same company that bought it, like uh, I think it's Sunrise actually, same company that bought it HMV in the uh, in the UK, kept them going, but couldn't keep our HMVs going. Instead, they just changed them on Sunrise Records. So there are some Canadians making way more money than me. I'll tell them right now. Oh, anyway, so get distracted for a second. Toby Hooper is interviewed on this, uh, right? Sort of. So you think, oh, wow, Toby Hooper's a fan of things. Um, like that's 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 pretty cool. Tube Hooper must have been like really big on like like really been in really deep di dove into like into horror because you know he's being interviewed on things. No, that's not the way it went. Uh, so the guys from Things were at a convention and they pretty much like photo bombed like, hey there, Turbo Feature Man. Uh, they like went in and like to Toby Hooper where he was like sitting and stuff and said, hey man, watch this trailer. This is a cult film, things. And that's, the, that's how they did it. That's how they got the, the feature, like the interview from Toby Hooper. It was literally them at a convention coming up and saying, hey, Toby Hooper, watch this trailer for this movie. Not Toby Hooper coming on like, yes, I remember things from back in the day. And uh, I gained an appreciation for it, for it was a regional Canadian horror film. No, <laughs> they, they went in. It was like me going to, like, to a convention and saying, hey, come on, tell, I got my camera here. Tell everybody how much you like called a cinema. What's called a cinema? Come on, man. It, it's, it's got the word called in it. Obviously, it, you know, everybody's watching. <laughs> and it's like, well, yes, I, I totally like it. But anyway, definitely worth checking out. So the thing is, the Intervision titles are normally $15. So this baby here is only going to set you back around $7.50. No, yeah, it's a fun, and it's like like Toby Hooper had no, no idea that that, that he was gonna. <laughs> he probably doesn't even didn't even know that that was that the interview was on the release. I'm sure maybe they did have to give him a sign something. Hey there, Fry, welcome, man. But definitely like one to uh, t to look at. If you're looking at Intervision titles, there's that one. Um, I haven't watched Murder Lust yet, but just on the cover alone, man, I I, I just you know. I, like Logan told me, it's like super boring, but that I got a feeling I'm gonna like it. I kind of want Beyond the Seventh Door. Uh, that's like that's another kind of uh, I think that's kind of expectation as well. Uh, now, Suffer the Children is supposed to be. Did you watch the other one on it, Logan? The other movie on that? What I'm not well my. First, like the top four is Night Killer, Beasts in Heat, Robo War, Pegnini Horror, 
and uh, I'm looking at uh, at Blood and Satan's Cod, depending on what the price is and stuff like that. But I, I'm I'm mostly focusing on the older stuff as opposed to the new stuff. Enigma's supposed to be pretty good. Demonia, I'll be honest, Brian, I don't remember that well. Uh, actually, I actually don't remember either one of those films that well, but I know that my... I think I watched Enigma with my dad, actually, a while back when I was there. Uh, my dad has it, like, 88 films put it as well. Um... We were going to do a video. Uh, me and Logan were going to do a video for those that guys that came late. We were going to do a, uh, a collaboration video. Now, totally my fault. Nothing to do with Logan. Uh, but I was not ready. I was so not ready. And uh, we tried to figure it out. We tried to go on Google Hangouts to try to get it to work. We couldn't get it to work, so we just chatted for a bit. And, <laughs> and we're planning to still do a collaboration video. So there's look for collaboration video probably late next week for me and Logan it'll be live uh, I'm gonna try and do live so I'm gonna be downloading some software onto my well, some, some apps and stuff onto my computer so that to make it a bit easier uh, because it's not the way back in the day you just go on Google Hangouts you do stuff like that StreamYard what is stream I don't know what StreamYard is uh, Brian uh, but I'll look it up but uh, I've just what I was just gonna do is use Skype and OBS and uh, and kind of go that way but it, Somebody says StreamYard works well. I wish I had my pen with me. Um, Brian, like, inbox me in Facebook that afterwards, and I'll uh, and I'll check it out. Is it an app that I can get, or I'm gonna just do it on computer? No, no, don't worry. Don't be disappointed because you didn't miss it. And from the conversation I had with Logan earlier, I think it's actually going. I think we're actually going to have a fun time with it. Oh, just just put the name there, man. Uh, I'll uh, I'll figure that the, the stuff out from there. But it's been the first time in a long time that I'll be doing stuff like this. Okay, on Twitter, thanks, Amy. Yeah. So, new titles that are coming out. I uh, mentioned these before in my last video, but for people that weren't in there. Uh, Night Killer, Robo War, Beast in Heat, Wax Mask, Killer Crocodile, Pagnini Horror, Violet, Demon of Incest, Gwendolyn, and the Pairs of, of the Yik Yak. Uh, Where from the Girls Dormitory, Vi, The Boys Next Door, The Peanut Butter Solution are all movies that are going to be 50% off for the first time during this sale. Thank you, Anthony. We, I had a blast, and uh, hopefully Brian will have me back on again. We, I've been on there like around four times now, so uh, he hasn't gotten tired of me yet. But he does some great stuff. If that's like if that's the first episode of Just of This that that you've listened to, hopefully it's not. Then make sure you like you you're subbed uh, because Brian does amazing stuff. Um, and he has some great guests on there too. Not just me, but some. Some he has some some fantastic people on. there, like Stephanie's and Michelle, people who, that you see on this channel, that you've seen their comments on on this channel before. And uh, Pure Cinema too is something that. And I think you just put a new Pure Cinema, which I haven't got to listen to yet. My Bodyguard. I have a story about My Bodyguard, by the way. Gwendolyn is a cool one. Like Gwendolyn, by the way, if you like Tiny Contain, uh, pretty sure it's Tiny Contain, right? Did I get it right, Tiny Contain? Uh, I'm sh I'm fairly sure it's trying to contain. <laughs> Ooh, it's super cute. All right, the bundles. Um, uh, for people that. No, oh, you have a great night. Hopefully you get some good stuff for the Severn sale. I apologize if I'm a little out of sorts. I plan to have something to bounce off of tonight. Um, oh, sexy monkey's got a got one on it. Because it's grainy. See, 
I think, and I'll be honest, guys, that some people don't get uh, the restoration aspect of it. Like, I know some people looked at Rad and uh, vin the Vinegar Syndrome title, and they said, oh, that's not as good as the, you know, as I don't like that as much as I like the DVD. Well, not the DVD, the the bootleg DVD, which is a VHS source one or a source off of a, uh, off a TV, really. Um, but in a lot of cases, like some of the early stuff that we looked at, when the movies looked like really bright, oh, that movie, look, look at the colors in that movie. Uh, sometimes they were kind of like artificially, you know, films that were artificially brightened or they were smoothed out, a lot of DNR was put in there. And, uh, you know, kind of like digital, digital knowledge reduction to kind of make it look, it gives it an artificial look to it. Um, oh no, grain, I definitely, I like grain, Just, uh, well, not, uh, active grain, right? You want, you want, you want to have active grain. Uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to that, so when you're seeing like grain and stuff, and some people see grain, especially in, like if a movie's mo moving fast, something like Rad, and they're doing like big BMX bike sequences, some say, well, there's like, you know, it's there's some pixelization or so, or there's some maybe that's some shadowing type thing, but no, it's like an active grain that's uh, that's in there. I don't usually talk about the tech part of it because it usually bores the hell out of people. <laughs> so uh, so I, I I tend to like just say you know get what you like type of thing. But yeah, when it, when it comes to a lot of like people talking about stuff like oh, that that wasn't that good that uh the a lot of those people don't like the grain part of it. But that's actually what the film will be like if you saw it in a uh, in a in a theater. Bundles. So we got four bundles to choose from. Just under three hours. I'm excited, Warlock. I, I'm gotta. I can't lie. I'm super excited about this. So so we got four bundles to choose from. And uh, the first bundle, the big bundle, it's three hours. It's three hours. Uh, sorry, I'm excited, guys. It's it's limited to 300 copies, the three of the of the bundle. It's uh, 196 dollars in American, and uh, it is uh, it gives all six titles, plus the Beast Must Die because that's coming back with a new restoration and a new slipcover, and uh, both of the Fulci T-shirts, the uh, nipple pasties. Got to have those nipple pasties. Get something for you. You know, well, if if you're all right, get something for your girlfriend or boyfriend. Get them some nipple pasties. Get them some some severed nipple pasties and a five sticker pack. And I've seen the stickers. They've been like kind of unveiling stickers. The last one was a bear grown sticker that kind of made me wince a bit. If you saw the sticker, you know what I'm talking about, Mama. Um, so the second one is called, is the hold the beans one. Uh, you saw Rat? I got. I still got to watch Rat. I haven't seen it in years, man. Uh, it, so basically that has all six titles plus the Beast Must Die that's limited to 500 bundles and that is $141 so that's not a bad price actually for uh, for seven films when you like do it out and like one of them like Fulci for Fake is going to have this cool lenticular cover too and uh, that's like I said I'm not going to get any of the, the new ones but if I get any of the new ones that Fulci for Fake oh, man lenticular cover Definitely cool. Beast Must Die is a fun film. Now, a lot of people don't like The Beast Must Die. Uh, back then, it's an amicus film, and it does have a gimmick to it. Uh, the Beast Must Die is kind of like part werewolf, part black exploitation, part action. It, it's a mix, mix mash like of, of films. But one of the cool things, when I was a kid, this was amazing, and and it got me because I am like I'm definitely a guy that that loves the gimmick stuff, right? So, The Beast Must Die says, you know. At the beginning, there's like, we, there is going to be a werewolf minute. At a certain time in this film, we will stop the film for exactly one minute to let you, the audience, make your guess on who is going to be the werewolf. So, yeah, so that's the thing. They, they actually, they legit do that. Um, and they stop the clock, stop, and they show this like werewolf on a clock. And we and and the and they come out like is it and they'll like show all the people's faces. It's really cool. Peter Cushing is in the film, by the way, and it's it's part Agatha Christie mystery, part werewolf, and you you gotta guess. You gotta guess who the werewolf is. You got a one werewolf minute to figure it out. And uh, this is a new transfer. I I think Indicator uh, were the guys that found the transfer. <laughs> Thank. I'm actually a huge fan of yours too. And you do the best Criterion videos that I, like. That's that is cool. Both me and my better half watch you. 
I've never actually gotten to win your streams, which I have to do. But it, very cool, Phil. 65 at Adamson sets are, are left right now. Um, that's going to be, hey, George. <laughs> and that, that's going to be like a, by the way, uh, Dasuki, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. I do apologize. If you have not checked out his channel, and I say this one with 100% in sincerity, um, definitely check it out. When it comes to knowing his stuff on the vinegars, on the set, on the God, I'll get it right, on the Criterion titles, the guy's the king of it. Um, that's who I go to when I want to find out about Criterion stuff. So thank you for coming in, even if it's only for a minute. Thank you for coming in. I really appreciate that. Number three, we got the Fulci taco, taco plate. So this is going to be kind of a, a neat one. If you're a Fulci fan, you just want to get the Fulci's, you don't want to get the Franco's. You got Enigma, Demonia, and Fulci for Fake. Now, Fulci for Fake is a different type of documentary. It's not just a, like a documentary. It is like a film documentary so basically you got an actor that is going to that is going to be acting in a film and in the film he's going to be playing Lucio Fulci and in order to play Lucio Fulci he's going he's going around basically to find out about Lucio Fulci's life what he, what he was like uh, that's what Fulci for fake that's the premise of Fulci for fake so it's a documentary uh, set in a fictionalized like environment unique way to do it And that, uh, and both T-shirts come with that as well. So that's priced at one hundred and five dollars. Is only a hundred, like limited to uh, to hundred of those. Blood on Satan's Claw, I, I think so. I mean, like the thing with Blood on Satan's Claw, and and this is the well, my confliction with Blood on Satan's Claw is there's there are other versions of Blood on Satan's Claw out there. I got to see what the features are. I know Screenbound put it out, Odeon put it out, right? Uh, so I know my dad has one from the UK, beautiful edition of Satan's Claw, but I do love that slipcover edition of uh of a blood and saints claw it's pretty sexy i kind of want it but I, I am really trying to focus on some of the older titles trying to fill in some spaces uh on films that i do, that i don't have and i don't have like a lot of money to go with but uh so it's going to be interesting to uh, to see the way that's uh that that's going to go but if you want to get the, if you still want to get the t-shirts you want to get some Fulci t-shirts now blood and saints claw won't be released again uh, it wasn't actually supposed to be released now. The only reason that we're getting it now is because these are the copies that uh, that are going to be done for uh, done for, like they're supposed to be in a convention, and conventions got cut down because you know what's going on in the world right now. We don't want to talk about that, <laughs> but you know what's going on. So the conventions were shut down. This is your this is kind of like your bonus thing. Conventions are shut down. You're getting this, uh, and uh, getting the copies that would have went to conventions otherwise. Uh, Japan is one of the places that's on my is on the top of my list to go. My my oldest child, she Japan is her, is her dream place. That's where she wants to spend the rest of her life at when she finally uh, gets uh, enough money gets out there. So the uh, how much are the are the new releases? I'm not quite sure how much each new release is yet. Uh, bundle wise, um, have you really? Uh, kind of blows me away. But thank you so much. Uh, uh, the third bundle is $105, limited to 100 of those. So if you want the fault you want. Now, the sm the cheapest bundles is next. It's called the Franco Burrito Combo. Uh, I did not make these names up. Uh, so it's got Shining Sex, which is a, a, a Franco one. Hey there, Australia. And there uh, there's a mist and the mystery title, what's it called again now? Ba I, my dad, I had it was called Bahia, what the heck's it called? I was actually talking to my dad about this title recently. So I, I can actually go there. Bahia Blanca. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed it or not. Thanks, Dale. Um, but who else picked up, like, a Ready or Not vibes off the cover of Bahia Blanca? Did you see the cover of Beja Blanca? Yeah, it's got like this girl in a wedding dress, kind of like Samara Weaving, and she's got a gun. And I'm like, 
ready or not. Uh, <laughs> so I'm sure like, uh, I'm guessing it's a scene in the film, but I'm guessing it didn't hurt that ready or not was a popular film. And I, I'm pretty sure that, that that was done on purpose. Um, and now that one, just to let you guys know, that one is only available during the sale. So Severn does this, it frustrates the heck out of me, but I understand the reasoning behind it. But that title is only going to be available during the sale. After the weekend is over, that title is like, if you get, like, if conventions start up again eventually, and they got some extra copies, they'll sell those at, at conventions, but they won't be selling on the site anymore. So it's a site exclusive for, and a sale exclusive for this sale only. As far as I know, it's the only title out of all these that's exclusive to to the sale dude if i come to japan you're gonna know right away because especially i don't know i mean i i'm guessing it's a rights thing but uh still they got they can sell some on the at conventions but i'm not quite sure how it works uh, i think what they do is they'll, they'll sell as many as they can during that and then they say okay we want stuff that can be at the sale uh, you know that we can sell at conventions that'll get people over to the table that may not have come over otherwise. We want to get something that, that the fans uh, would like to, uh, you know, would would like to see, and that's a treat for them when they come to the table that they can't get on the website. They can't get uh, that they can only get through. Uh, am I staying live until the sale starts? I'm not sure if I'll stay li live that long. If if I was, I would have like started this around an hour later. Uh, the sale looks like it's gonna be cool, guys. Uh, the Franco and his Frankie and his pals is a new Intervision title. That's limited to a thousand copies. So uh, now Intervision was one of those that uh, didn't that let people kind of like they just like passed on a bit. But uh, Intervision started to get more popular now. And at only a thousand copies, it's definitely gonna be a unique title. I still, I know nothing about Frank and his pals. I look at the cover and I still think of Hilarious House of Frightenstein because I'm Canadian and I remember that show, man. It came on every day when I was a kid. Uh, you know, Vincent Price was there. Uh, I'm guessing this is not going to be the quality of Hilarious House of Frightenstein. Rest in peace, Billy Van. Uh, but uh, it'll be an interesting title nonetheless and I'm sure it's going to sell out during the sale uh, probably like fairly quickly. This guys if you don't have this this is the one that's going to go up 10 copies there are 10 copies uh so the thing i'll tell you right now uh is that the neat thing is that just like vinegar syndrome severin is having the add to existing order button on their site so let's talk about that for a second because that's going to be important this is going to be your best friend uh, if there's something you really want, if you want to grab like one of those box sets or something like that was only like limited stuff, uh, what you do, you grab that, you go in, you, you buy that right away. Then you go back, you look in, you can add to existing order, and if eventually gets up to like free shipping, or if it's going to go, go in free shipping right away, um, then, you know, definitely go for that. But on a, t on a title that's got 10 copies, or a title that's got like 200 copies, that goes fast. There's a lot of people going to be on the site. Uh, go in, put that in your, in your cart, check out. Come back, do the rest of your shopping. You got the add to existing order already, button already there. Um, that's what's, that, that's going to be kind of, uh, that's going to be important. Grindus has them in stock for $49.99. Perfect. Thank you, Dave. Because there are going to be people that are going to miss out on this. And uh, they're going to be... My dad just texted me because he's excited about the sale. I'm super excited about the sale. Rad sold out. Did you guys, were you guys there when we're at, did, everybody did the rad thing, right? Like watching Rad sell out. I did. Uh, the Beast Must Die is fun. It, it's a fun film. I got to open and close this up again because I just realized that uh, the message that I'm seeing, the L. Abson set is pretty sexy, dude. Uh, I know it's, uh, I mean, 
it, it's going to be a hard one. Like, I can understand. the you know the the hesitation it's it's fair it is an expensive set but like it is like pretty much the complete work of this guy of one director so think of it like that it's like the it's the complete filmography of like of a director and that's that's pretty insane this this i think kobe i, uh, I think it started within within an hour or two uh like after it came back if it was that long if it was that long any DVD boutique? You mean that like strictly DVD? Uh, I can't really think of any like off the, off the top of my head right now. Less than an hour. Thanks, Luke. I, that, I was pretty sure that's what it was. I was working at the time when when it started, so I only got to come in like every once in a while and see. But I remember seeing go to like four hundred and five, and then the next time I checked, it was a hundred and something. Then I was like, I think it was in the twenty five. Uh, I tweeted on my on my uh, my Twitter account to let people know, and then it was gone. Like a few minutes later, it was gone. Exactly, Ringo. Think of like the Al Hampson set as kind of like the the Bergman set, but of like Z films. And and it, it's section. I mean, if you need if you need me to, I can run upstairs and I can grab uh, the Al Hampson set and show you. It it is gorgeously uh, gorgeously done. Um, and it's so it's it's so rare. I mean, what's my dad getting? But I think my dad's going to get some of the older stuff. But my dad's a Franco fan. So I know he's looking at the Franco stuff. Uh, so and he look, uh, he's, he's got a lot of the Fulci stuff. Like Enigma was released by 88 Films in the UK, and Dad really buys a lot of UK releases as well. So uh, he has that one. I've seen that in his collection. Actually, pretty sexy cover, by the way. As far as like merchandise goes, there's a Satan Sata shirt. I'm kind of tempted on that, uh, but uh, I don't know. The slips for Fulci are limited. Uh, the one, the only thing that I know is limited for sure, like 100% limited for sure, is uh, is, is going to be the uh, the second like uh, Franco film. That's limited to the sale. That that I do know. Does anybody know if they started sending out those? Like the site went down, so I didn't know if the have they started sending out the Umberto Lindsay, Carol Baker box sets yet? By the way, really cool uh, Jallo set to pick up if you're. Uh, if you haven't got it, I wish my dad was on here. I should. Fulci slips limited to fifteen hundred per release. They are actually Logan. There's some cool stuff. I bought the big bundle when it came to Fulci. So I'm sorry, when it came to Al Amson because I just had to. I needed the poster because I'm a huge fan of Al Amson. Uh, but not just that. The, one of the guys is is a, is a famous stuntman. Has done a lot of work, and like the and I mentioned on it before the character from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, is based on this guy. It's like, it's a kind of, so uh, that Brad Pitt plays, right? And he's like, he autographed the, the poster for the L. Amson. And, and I had to have that. Like that, that, that was a must for me. I don't go after like a lot of autographs and stuff like that, but that, that was a big one. So I will limit other things. I got that here too. I wrote things down. I did, guys. So the lanyard, by the way, there's a special lanyard, which I do want to mention. It's like a convention lanyard. If you've never gone to a convention, I'm sure most of you guys have. But if you haven't gone to a convention before, they have these like these lanyards and you can like wear them. Um, so what they're doing is like, and I need to get like more clarification on this, um, is basically with the lanyard, there's a there's apparently there's a place to like write down like your uh, your next 10 orders order numbers and then after that like uh, I'm not sure if you send it in or whatnot or you snapshot it well, I'm sure they'll, they'll let you know you'll be able to uh, to get a, uh, a free blu-ray or DVD of your choice so like you'll be able to pick something out as well it's a cool one I mean like it's it's a different like when I talk about Jallo guys there's different like I mentioned before there's different types of Jallo uh, there is the Argento-ish like this is a scary guy that's like 
killing people off in bloody ways giallo and there's Lamberto Lenzi Carol Baker giallos which are more the jet set type of giallos where they're uh, where they're you know tr driving the girl insane and and it, that you know there's there's uh different with their insurance like schemes and stuff like that to, to get stuff going um, I'm not making it sound very exciting but it actually is good what's really neat about the Lamberto Lenzi one is is the cool like soundtracks that are on there there's some nice uh stuff as far as I know, Warlock, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I really hope it's not time limited, especially if it's ten orders. Uh, like, if it's ten, if it's ten different orders, I mean, it's. I'm really a little confused about the lanyard. I, it's a neat little thing to get. You're definitely grabbing blood and saying it's, cla that's, it's a classic one. Uh, I I think I'm pretty sure. Hey there, Dylan. I'm pretty sure that I'm uh, I'm gonna grab uh, the. Uh, I'm gonna grab. At least uh, Beast and Heat for sure, because I want the Nazi exploitation documentary, and I'm going to be doing a video on this channel about Nazi exploitation. Oh, it's definitely the virtually relive the 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 convention experience. This is the like these here sales are your closest thing to the convention experience, and especially because they got convention exclusives that would normally not get back on the site again. Blood and Satan's Claw. Hemisphere horrors; those would not be back on the site. It's back on the site only because of what's going on right now. Only because these can't get to convention tables right now. And uh, for some of these companies, like Severin, Vinegar Syndrome, people forget that these are smaller companies. Um, those conven that convention money was that that's money that was important to them. If you liked Ilsa Shield for the SS, look at the Beast and Heat. Uh, they actually interviewed Diane Thorne in the documentary. Uh, Nazi exploitation on that and it's not just like we're not talking like a 15 minute interview or like a 20 minute interview or like or a little featurette we're talking about a full feature length documentary on Nazi exploitation like a 90 minute documentary so if you picked up vinegar syndrome and like the spookies and you're like oh cool there's a doc there's two documentaries on here uh, not the beast and heat had like has a full length Nazi exploitation documentary last year the site crashed right at midnight hopefully it won't tonight um now I did li list all the titles here, and how limited they were. So let's let's get to that. So the Fulci's Enigma is limited to fifteen hundred copies with the slip and the soundtrack. Not quite sure what's going after that. Hey there, uh, Fulci's Demonia with the, with slip and soundtrack is limited to fifteen hundred copies. Fulci for Fake with Lenticular that's limited to fifteen hundred copies. Uh, Franco's Shining Sex two disc with slip is limited to fifteen hundred copies. The uh, the Baha, Bahia Blanca, whatever it's called again, that's that's limited to the sale time. So after the sale is over, that ain't coming back. And Frank and his pals limited edition, that's limited to a thousand copies. New merchandise coming in is the Enigma T-shirt. There's a Demonia T-shirt. There's a Severin nipple pasties. Who doesn't want that? Uh, there's a five sticker pack. There's a new Severin T-shirt which has a which has a black is a black T-shirt with the Severin logo in red. It's the first time doing that coloring. There's a new T-shirt T-shirt for Vi, and there's a T-shirt for Satan Satis. Have I seen Vi's next door? A long time ago, I, I did see it. I really liked it. Uh, Maxwell Caulfield stole it for me. I'm a big Maxwell Caulfield fan, though, so I do have a bias there going in. Gotta let you know that. It wasn't one of the bands. And that's the thing. The band spit video nasties. Now, a lot of those movies like really didn't deserve to be banned. Vi is one I'm interested in, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get it during the sale. But uh, it is definitely like a, it's a Russian horror. Have I seen Satan's Slave? I don't think I have. I don't even think that I've even seen like the, like the remake of Satan's Slave, which was highly regarded, apparently. Uh, but it's something that's passed me by. And uh, we'll be, I'll always be honest with you. If I haven't seen the movie, I'll tell you I've seen the movie. Um, that Satan's Slave is one that, that I've heard great things about. I have not seen it myself. But uh, uh, if there's anybody out here that saw it and can give like a cool recommendation for it, then definitely uh, do so. Because there's, there's lots of times that I don't know. I have seen Sinful Dwarf. It is crazy fun. It, it's sleazy. It, it, it really is like this. What I like on the Sinful of the Wharf, and I'm probably the only person that will say this, but Sinful of the Wharf comes with two movies. Uh, yep, two movies. Uh, you want to add something like the Vinegar Syndrome-ish? So there's a second film on, on Sinful of the Wharf called The Blue Balloon. It is an adult film. 
it is definitely an adult film. It's a triple X film. It has like, you know, it's got a DVD VHS type quality to it, but it's kind of the best quality that they had at the time. And uh, it kind of broke my heart. So yeah, I, I would recommend Symphony of the Wharf if only for the blue balloon, but I do, did think both of them were good. Wax Mask, 100% Jerry. Uh, great film. Serge Stavletti's did it. He's kind of like, he's the Tom Savini of Italy. Uh, he, if you like like Argento's films, he did a lot of the special effects work in those. Especially if you've seen the movie Sino Syndrome and you, all those like things like with the, the shot through the, uh, through the eye and shot through the, through the cheek type thing. That, that's Stavletti's work. So he directed that. It was originally supposed to be directed by Lucio Fulci, uh, but Lucio Fulci unfortunately passed away. There's some great features on Wax Mask. I would 100% recommend that one. It's a great release. Um, amazing release. Uh, the, as far as the Dutch, uh, the Scorpio Films Dutch Sex Wave Collection, I haven't finished it yet. I will be doing a review on that. Uh, so far, I gotta say, it's an excellent set. I would recommend it just based on the two films that I've seen alone. I got two more to watch. As soon as I do, I will be doing a complete review of that box set, and it is pretty cool. So, Cult Epics, good job, guys. Night Killer is not a good film, but it's a fun film. It's a crazy film, and that's, that's an important thing. Uh, to to understand, uh, Wax Masters. I think Wax Masters is, is legit. It's a good film. It has some really great actors in it. Night Killer is one of those you're gonna put on with friends. It's it's one of those kind of moments like that. Kung Fu Trailers again. The, with Juan just mentioned that one, great one as well. And yeah, it's kind of a slasher. We'll we'll call we'll qualify it as slasher. Is that guy's like version of? I would kill for Hollywood Vice Squad, Dylan. That definitely needs a release. I kind of expect that to get a release from like Scream or Shout. That's it. It just kind of has that feel. You know what I mean? Because you know, like Vice Squad got a release from them, and uh, you know, there's a few others like Shout. Shout got a release. It kind of just has a feel that that would be the company that will put it out. I personally would like to see Vinegar Syndrome put it out. Starts as a slash. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Pandemic can only be five dollars. My better half might, might want to buy that one. <clears throat> Vi is definitely Russia's first. Was definitely Russia's first horror film. Yeah, you're correct on that. Kung Fu trailers again. If you like the Kung Fu trailers, there's two sets of those done. The first you now get the first one first. Uh, if you don't have obviously, but uh, because there's like a, there's a commentary on the first one, and there's actually some uh, like there's an interview as well, like a small featurette, like around 15 minutes or so. Definitely worth like checking out. The buzz next door, Dick Towns, when you're after. I kind of want that, and I I I sort of I really wanted the poster. Um, well. Because like Maxwell Caulfield signed it, uh, I'm a, I'm such a huge Maxwell Caulfield fan. Uh, I'm a big Grease Two fan. Charlie Sheen's there too. Uh, <laughs> well, but I'm a Maxwell Caulfield fan, like 100. percent Does everyone have a stock can or any Chidens page like Vinegar Syndrome does? I don't think they do actually. Uh, not as far as I know. Now, if they do, it, it'll it'll it's new to me. I didn't see it last time around, but uh, they didn't have the add to add to cart option. I don't think last time around either. Like I'm sorry, I had to add to our existing uh, order option, but that's going to be here there this time. So kudos on them for that as well. What's my favorite seven release? That's a damn good question. Uh, I really liked. Oh, this is so hard. Uh, it's like picking your favorite. I like the video nasties documentaries that they put out. Uh, uh, that's probably my most watched seven releases. This video nasties and video nasties draconian days. Uh, those are two. They're DVD releases. But they're actually two really, really good releases if you like documentaries. Uh, I like a lot of the Severance documentary stuff. Like Lost Souls was great. I, I loved the uh, 2000 AD documentary as well. But for like the, for the the normal stuff, uh, Skinner was an excellent release with some some of the best special features. They weren't like long special features, but they were really well done special features. I love the, the release of Skinner. Uh, Wax Mask was another amazing release. Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals uh, is probably the cannibal movie I can watch the most um, but uh, they put out these here releases and there's one of them right here uh, 
this, these are just Franco ones. And if you're looking at the new Just Franco stuff, there's some older Just Franco stuff to look into. So this is the Vampire Lights, for instance, right? Do I think Fulci for Fake will sell out? The lint it's a lenticular cover that might actually make it sell a little bit more. I'm not quite sure if it's going to sell out, but it, it's hard to tell nowadays like what's going to actually sell out. Now, what's what's really neat about this one, by the way, is look at this. So there is no like there's no like words on here. There's no like company branding. It's just the artwork. And I and there is one. And if you get she killed in ecstasy, it's same thing. It, it's just like this. It has the artwork, and I absolutely adore that. That's something that I would like to see more companies do more of. I think that's a great idea for um, for release. Is just to put the is to put the slip like that, and just like unadulterated artwork on the and you know something you can enjoy. It's different. It's unique. Uh, so them random for she was taken uh, too young uh, too young and uh, and too early from us. And uh, she worked with, with Jess Franco. She would be Jess Franco's original muse. Uh, that would turn out to be later, after Soul of Miranda Pass, would be Lena Romay, who would be in many Jess Franco films and be with him for the rest of his life. A year after Lena Romay. Oh, dude, have a good night, evening there. Hopefully you get the, to order some stuff. And uh, let me know what you pick up, man. Uh, unfortunately, the year after Lena Romay died, uh, then Jess Franco died afterwards. Uh, they were a... When people say our couple's meant to be together couples that kind of like their souls are entwined yeah in that case i think so but maybe i'm just hopeless romantic Fliss and christine i don't have jerry so i really can't say uh i've is Fris felicity the one that's uh jewel shepherd or is that christina christina one of i think one of them is jewel shepherd right um uh, I kind of I, I don't remember a lot. It's sex. It's the sexploitation stuff, which honestly I'm uh, I've got a I've got a weakness for. Hey David, welcome man. Would I rather have a commentary or an interview? It depends on the film one. And I'll tell you one of the the, the serious part of this. It depends on how if I got to review the film too. If I'm reviewing the film, sometimes I want an interview because commentaries take a long time. Uh, I, I'm doing. I do an After Dark series, which which deals with more adult titles, not always X-rated titles, but that can sometimes be what they are. Um, and uh, I haven't done one in a bit, but I will do, be doing one in a while. Uh, one of the films that, that I'm going to be doing is the Taboo Quadrology. Uh, there are, however, three commentaries on Taboo, at least, and because of that, I've got that's going to take a long time to do because I got to listen to three commentaries, take notes. Watch the movie without the commentary. Take notes. If there's interviews, listen to that as well and do research. So sometimes a, a, a good 15, minute, 15 or 20 minute interview just, just does me good. Kathy's Curse. I like Kathy's Curse. It is an exploitation one. Uh, a, a really good film. And what's neat about Kathy's Curse is that... Uh, oh, Tribble, have a great evening there, man. Uh, I will let you know what I get. <clears throat> uh, but uh, Kathy's Curse is kind of exploitation for like years you'd see it on like old Mill Creek like releases the early Mill Creek stuff before Mill Creek got really good uh, and Mill Creek has gotten really good um, there uh, and you know there it would be like like just the release everybody I was like sourced from VHS really badly done and then you get the the Severin uh, version of uh, Kathy's Curse which I got right here because this is one of my picks for the sale by the way uh, that I think people should pick up and uh, it is it's like night and day so if you've ever seen this movie like on like the the grungy type thing then you you, you got to see this it, it, it is gorgeous it is so well done it's before they went into the black cases unless they've like switched it out and there are like like either commentaries on this one as well uh, like there's two cuts of the film on here and it's kind of like it's like a uh, what do you call it? it's like demon possession evil child type of film do you want to give too much away but definitely like it's a fun film definitely it's a fun film if you like exploitation especially uh you switch yours to a black case i i want to do that with with mine because i do love the black cases um omen like well check it out and see it's a it, it's a fun one i mean like obviously like you got to go through and like choose like pick and choose which ones you want uh when you're looking at stuff, go for stuff that like 
that you're that you're into. Like if you're like say you're a Jello fan, then there's going to be some stuff there for you. If you're like you like cheesy Z grade movies fan, there's definitely some stuff there for you. If you like sexploitation films, uh, like like there's definitely going to be some stuff there. Do I own all of Dave Cron? I don't own all of Dave Cronberg's films, uh, but I do like a lot of his stuff. What's well, my favorite kind of case is uh, I I like the black sexy seven cases. Uh, now of course, uh, 4K use the black cases as well, but I I just there's something about Severn's black case that I I just really I I really like the way it's done. The first time I saw black cases was actually not from Severn; it was from Screen Factory, and it was with their Halloween mega box set that they put out. <clears throat> but uh, I think Severn does it well, and one of my favorite features, and I will say this right now, because Severn does it uh, in all of their and, and a lot of their releases, and they put soundtracks. They put complete soundtracks. Now, remember back in the day when you'd be excited when you buy Highlander on Anchor Bay? Uh, oh, I definitely got to do that, Dave. I'm definitely putting my Black Christmas on the Black Case. Uh, and and you get like one or one song or two songs on a CD. Like, oh, look, you get the song from Highlander and like another cut of the song from Highlander. And that'll be it. Like, be two songs on a CD. And you'd be super stoked to get it. Well, now, just one of them, you get movies like Absurd, which I strongly recommend if you like Italian horror and you like slasher films, um, which that has the complete, now, the complete soundtrack on the film. So you got Absurd, you got the Blu-ray right here, and you got the CD soundtrack of the film. So, and now, some of you might be thinking, well, you know, I don't, you know, I don't play CDs so much anymore, that type of thing. Even if you don't play CDs, even if you never play CDs, uh, I'm sure you've got either got like Spot, we got either iTunes or whatever the Android equivalent of that is, and you can always like burn it, like you just like copy it to your, uh, to a, uh, you know, to your computer, put it on your iPod or uh, phone, however you do it. Oh, and listen to CDs. I, I have more respect for you, Amy. I really do. Is absurd the, that same movie? No, it's not. Actually, see, uh, Anthropopagus was put out was put out first. It's by George Eastman. George Eastman was like uh, he's a writer too. He's an actor, and uh, and and a writer, and uh, a really smart guy. So he's he's a big dude, right? He, he plays like bad guys in a lot of movies. So in Anthropopagus, like it's a famous film. Uh, and it's a famous because it's a video nest. It's a gore film, and we know there's a scene where he, where he kind of like, hey, the penguin, where kind of eats his guts type of thing. That's that's the sequence in the film. It kind of grossed me out a bit. I was iffy on Anthropopagus. I found it a little eh. It's a good film, but I, not my favorite. I'll eventually get it in my collection. I don't have it now. Uh, but um, absurd is kind of like what I consider the real, the first Halloween two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, and I, I'll so we got like Edward Edward Purdue Edmund Purdue in it, uh, who was in of course *Don't Up to Christmas*, and uh, he's kind of like the the character like that plays the uh, he, he kind of plays the the doctor the Lo Dr. Loomis character except he's a priest and he's chasing after this this character played by uh, George Eastman. So George Eastman is a monster of guy. He's a killer much in the line of Michael Myers. He doesn't wear masks, but he's a silent killer. And there's this girl at home, and she's. Um, and she's babysitting her sister who's who's paralyzed uh, meanwhile there's a bunch of like adults that are going off to watch the football game and it's hilarious oh no it's definitely not a copy of Halloween it definitely like there's some aspects of like okay like he's he's menacing her but it's absurd is really the oven scenes excellent uh, its own thing I would put it highly above Anthropopagus, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's a much better film. It's a much, uh, it's a much better done film, and uh, I love the soundtrack to it. Uh, I think George Eastman, uh, you know, he's great in Anthropopagus. I think he's even better in Absurd. I love the ending to Absurd. Don't give it away, guys. It's, it's but it's got a cool ending too. Uh, so it's just, and it just ends, and when it ends, but it just ends on the on the sweet spot. It's, it, it's well done. I would definitely recommend it. It's one of my top recommendations for the sale if you like this type of stuff. So, if you uh, if you like George Eastman, uh, if you if you liked Halloween, uh, <laughs> so people much often call this Halloween too because you know basically he stalks somebody else type thing. So, uh, 
This could have been one. They could have put a Halloween 2 cover on it. I haven't seen Erotic Nights of the Living Dead. I have a long time ago. Uh, Porno Hall, I've seen most of Judah Model's films. Uh, even some of his other films, you know? The ones he did with Rock Zafrid. I've seen those too. Uh, and they're actually high budget ones. But uh, they're okay. I'm not sure if they'd be. They're, they are. You, if you look at the title of the film and you're like, yeah, that's a movie I want to see, you're probably the audience for it. If you look at the title of that film and you're like, eh, not quite sure, it's probably not for you. <laughs> That's the best way to put it uh, when it comes to uh, to those type of films because they do deal in some like some stuff where yeah. Let's I'll punch in where there's not not a lot of scenes in the film where you're gonna be like, well, my my parents could probably walk in on this one. <laughs> that's you know that's the best way to put it. But yeah, I definitely recommend this one, especially with the soundtrack. I missed the comma there. I got to see it now. And I do apologize. What I got to do here. <laughs> is uh, close this up every once in a while. Because what happens is uh, it stops showing the. Uh... Uh, what do you guys think about the whole Django thing by the way? Are you pissed with, with Blue Underground? I'm kind of pissed with Blue Underground. Should I be pissed with Blue Underground? I haven't watched. Somebody sent me a video. Uh, about the whole situation. Uh, it's just they're not doing anything with Django, man. But, uh, am I getting, I'm, I'm hoping to get some stuff from the sale. I'm, uh, fingers crossed. Well, it looks like the rights are gone again. Uh, Arrow again, once, att again attempted to put out the Django set. Uh, they got a cease and desist order. And, uh, and unless people already got the set, if you already got the set, kudos, man. Awesomeness. If you don't have it, you're probably not going to get it. Uh, and what bugs me about the whole thing, I, I, I can't buy a lot, but I'll, I'll do my best. Again, Logan, yeah, again. Uh, is that uh, I listened to like the interview that they had with, with Bill Lustig not too long ago. Uh, I know we all know what's coming out of the coming out of that gate. Uh, he's looking at some 4K restorations, looking at horror stuff, Doubters of Darkness, stuff like that. It doesn't seem that he's going to be doing anything with Django and uh, Blue and Arrow's done like a, a super great job with uh, with the Django release. It looks like I'm sure uh, Logan's actually got it, so he, he knows he did a great job with it. Bill Lustig did direct Maniac. He actually directed a few films: Maniac, Uncle Sam, of course the the uh, Maniac Cop films as well. Because he likes that Maniac stuff, guys. I think 2018 was the last time we've seen anything like come out at all for uh, Django uh, in, uh, from Blue Underground. Maybe even a little bit earlier. Do I, I, I definitely do, I, but David, it's going to depend on if Arrow like sells well with like Pitch Black and sells well with, with Flash Gordon. Uh, I think they will. Uh, th I, I think they're going to be good sellers for them. I personally want Pitch Black myself, uh, especially a 4K edition of it. So uh, yeah, if that's the that's the thing. It's all all this stuff all depends on like, are we do we buy it? Yes, we buy it. You're going to see more coming out, and uh, the more that the I'm sure like with with Rad right now for Vinegar Shenan, for instance, uh, then definitely there's, yeah. I uh, see, I don't see 8K, and I'll, I'll tell you what I think with, with the whole 8K thing. I got uh, that asked a lot. Um, is that I don't think 8K is going to be something that's going to be a format. I, I really don't. I think 8K is going to be for streaming. It's going to be for streaming games, it's going to be for streaming movies. Uh, and uh, but I don't think we're going to see. I don't think 8K discs or anything coming in the near future. Just for the fact that 4K is just starting to kind of take hold, and and you know it's like I'm sure it'll it'll, it'll look, it will look great, but uh, uh, I don't see it happen. You think it will happen? I don't. I mean, like I think 4K, like and I, I hate to say this, I think 4K is probably. The this is the the big step when it comes to physical media. Uh, when it comes to 8K, I think they're looking at 
when they did 8K, that's because if anybody's ever streamed 4K, for instance, like say you got Netflix in the whole and in in UHD, uh, from so you got Ultra HD like Netflix. You're gonna one thing you're gonna notice if you if you got a 4K TV and and an actual 4K like physical copy of a disc, um, streaming 4K isn't like real 4K. It's it's not it doesn't work as well, and the audio is not as good. Uh, so maybe with 8K, streaming quality can get to 4K level, and uh, I think that's what they're going for. That and and like video games, which is gonna be like a big seller for stuff like that. I would love to see Criterion go 4K. I mean, they're slow. Criterion's a slow adapter. Uh, it's 4K. I think it is. I mean, like, I personally think it's worth the upgrade. But uh, I don't think like it's something that you got to go out and grab like every 4K release or buy the movies over that type of thing. Um, you got when I understand. You got to understand. I wear glasses and I can't tell the difference between 4K, but you gotta and yes, uh, same as the, as the way Blu-ray player would upscale a DVD, 4K you know upscales, uh, and so when that's the thing, if you there's 4K reviewers on on YouTube, uh, and you gotta have a TV, you gotta play a movie on on the 4K TV, and you don't want to play that same Blu-ray in the 4K player because it's gonna upconvert anyway, so it's not gonna really show you the, the you know the difference or the definition, so you're gonna want to like take that Blu-ray, watch it on a you know, on a non 4K TV, on a on a Blu-ray player, uh, if you're doing like a comparison review, which I luckily don't have to do, uh, though I do have a 4K TV and a regular TV in my house because, of course, I do. I watch movies all the time. But yeah, I mean, like the thing is, uh, it's not just when you look at 4K. It's not just picture. Like, understand, it's not just picture. Uh, picture's fantastic. Like, picture's great. That that that's one thing that's important as well. Uh, it, it but sound, uh, Dolby Atmos sound. Trust me, you'll know the difference. Uh, and uh, and and the color gamut. It's a much larger color gamut. But we're getting anything in Severn sale. I'm uh, Pinga. I'm looking at some stuff. I'm looking at Night Killer. I'm looking at Beast and Heat. Uh, and uh, I'm looking at uh, like Robo War. Uh, I'm still unsure, but Robo War, uh, Pignini Horror too. I'm a big fan. I had a huge crush on on uh, Derry Nicolotti back in the day. Uh, you know, back in like the days of like Tenebrae and stuff like that. So uh, that's the uh, you know so that's that's obviously a possibility. And it's got Donald Pleasance. I'm a huge Donald Pleasance fan. I would love to get some of the uh, the pins. If some merch is on sale, uh, I like you. Know, I guys told like I told you guys, I'm starting to collect pins, and I do want to get like a jean jacket full of pins. Reward's pretty average. That's what I expect from it though. Like. Pegnini Horror, Night Killer. Thanks, Peter, because I'm really strong in those. Uh, Robo, it's kind of, not really Robo, it's a war, kind of like a, a Robocop ripoff, except put into like a, a like a, and I won't say Predator, but you know, like a, an army type of thing. Scream, scream yeah, Fractured Graveyard Shift. I like, I like killer rap films, so I'm all down for that one, man. My favorite killer rap film is still the one with Peter Weller, though, of Unknown Origin. I just really like that film. Her Pignini Horror is awful. Sometimes awful is what I like. You know, it really depends. THX 1138, I did. I haven't seen it in a long time. Uh, but yeah, I definitely did like it when I saw it. Not enough people know about of Unknown Origin. And it stars a Newfoundlander in it. I'm Newfoundland, by the way, from Newfoundland. Uh, it's Shannon Tweed, who, uh, like, she, well, she's one of the stars. She's the, she's the wife in it. Before she got into like her sexy roles type thing. What was the night killer called? Texas Hands Massacre Three. Even after third, well, uh, in Italy, they often uh, just. Uh, I love that film, by the way, the Willard film, Crispin Glover one. But in Italy, they often like change the titles around, like to to kind of like attach it to a successful like North American franchise. Uh, Shocking Dead was called Terminator 2. And, uh, and like, uh, the, uh, like Evil Dead, when they started doing those, they called them the Casa series of films. So there's a whole bunch of, of course, Zombie, uh, which you got started out from, like, you know, Don the Dead, 
as, as like, you know, kind of like a spin off of that. Hey there, Dungeon. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> so like, and of course there's the fake sequels. Like uh, there was a really good film done by, uh, by Richard Franklin, in my, in my opinion, it's a good film anyway, called Patrick. I think that's in Severn actually. I think Severn might have put that out. Um, and so Patrick, where's the synapse? What, se, se, one of them put it out. It's an Australian horror, and basically it's a guy in a, in a wheel, basically he's in, in a bed, and, and he's got like telekinesis. Uh, better than I, than I made it sound. But anyway, so Italy put out Patrick, Patrick Lives, a sequel to Patrick, right? So in the original one, you know, Patrick uses telekinesis, he kills the doctor, that type of thing. Spoiler alert. Um, in Patrick Lives, the Italian version, uh, a guy's walking in the road. I think he gets hit in like in the head with a coke bottle or something like that. Goes into like a kind of a kind of a coma type thing, and he moves stuff and you know gets people to to have sex because why not? Because it's an Italian like knockoff uh, sequel. Of course it is. Of course it's got to be a little sleazier. So, and that's not a that's not like a knock on it. I actually like Patrick Lives. Happy Blood and Saints Cloud, but Blood and Saints Cloud thing's gonna go pretty fast. <laughs> it's it's going to be interesting to see how uh, how how it goes. I do like this stuff. I would like to see another one of those. I always miss out on those like limited slip covers, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre three, and you know like Alien. Like a Terminator 2. Those are so cool. I love those. Gossip's are crazy. Actually, when I was a kid, I saw it like in a. Uh, they showed it in. Not, it wasn't in a theater. It was like in a, like at a uh, community hall. Actually, I actually really liked the film. Sequels, and eh, but the first one's good. I <laughs> just it's worth checking out. So I'll let you guys know. If he was in there, my dad is here. He he he's kind of quiet, but uh, my dad is is here somewhere. You were the gates from hell, the Ronin flicks one. Really cool cover. Was Scorpion was the Scorpion to the gates from hell? Have I seen the red balloon? I have seen the Red Balloon. Not a Severn title, but still good. Exactly. Please understand that. Uh, yeah, Warlock's correct. There, th nothing secure until you check out. Please, please understand. Because in the Vinegar Syndrome sale, a lot of people missed out on those like limited editions, like VSA titles that they really wanted to get because they, kept, they put it in the cart. They thought it would be secure there. And they kept shopping, and when they went to, to check out, they realized that it was it was sold out, and then they either got a dash copy or they didn't get a copy at all. So it, there is an option on the website to add to existing order. So if there's a title that you really want and it's limited edition, grab that title, check it out, and then come back and continue your uh, your search through through the other stuff. So. You got like some, there's some limited edition copies of Parent Revenge of the Living Dead Girl, which is gonna, does have a standard edition, which has a sexy cover too, by the way, I got to say that. But I am glad I got the limited edition one because it was sent to me by a good friend of mine on here and, um, and it had the soundtrack, which I really like. Didn't have to pay for, but that's the thing, you're going to miss out if, if you don't dig town. Like if, if it's something like, and I'll put it up here again, this has 10 copies. Now, I'm not sure, but like if you add to existing order and you add and it goes over the threshold of the eventually goes over that hundred dollar threshold, you should be able to like switch it up because then your order gets to over a hundred dollar spot, right? Or over 150 if you're in Canada or, or 200 if you're or if you're international. And uh, then you should be able to like look in like in your shipping options and just change your shipping option. Not sure about that, but uh, that's what I would do. If if it's something that you really want, like you, like that would be the way to go with it. I 
I'm sure there's going to be like some surprises that we're that we're not expecting. Uh, but there, Severin is like one of those. They're like me at Christmas, like when they get their kids Christmas gifts, and they're and they're like, you know, don't tell them what got them for Christmas. Like really, like my better half tells me this to me all the time. Do not tell the kids what you picked out for them. Do not tell them. And I'm like, I, of course I won't tell them. And I'm like, hey kids, something cool. <laughs> hey, Dad. Um, have you figured out what you're gonna get yet? Because I'm still, I'm still thinking on it. I know you got. Uh, this is my dad in here, and he knows a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff. So, this is how I found out about movies, guys. Because when I was young, I would go visit my dad, and he would have copies of Famous Monsters of Filmland all over the place. And I would like pick them up and like read through them. And hence started my my cinema my cinema love. I mean it's gonna be different. I mean for me right now I don't have a lot to like like I'm not I don't not work with like a large budget at, at this time. So uh I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna to go towards uh, the the older releases that I don't have because one neat thing and the one thing that you can say and, and you got to give them kind of quality when it comes to this is that the seven release there's no MSRP uh, <clears throat> there's there's no MSRP when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, to this so it's not like when we went to the vendor syndrome sale uh, uh, but what happened basically is uh, you know if something was like thirty-five dollars, and then like regular, it's on sale for like twenty-nine dollars, and then people say, "Well, okay, it's going to be twenty-nine dollars. It's going to be half off the twenty-nine, but no, it's going to be half off the thirty-nine, which was the original price of it." With the Severin one, there's no MSRP, so whatever the price was on it, say it's a twenty-eight dollar title, uh, then that's going to be like that's going to be fourteen dollars. If it's a Intervision title, which runs around fifteen dollars, so if I remember correctly, that should be approximately seven fifty. So it'll be interesting to see how it uh, how it goes. My dad's a Franco fan, so you guys got Franco questions. I'm sure he can answer them better than I can. Uh, and it, but that's the thing. I mean, like it's not like they legitimately tell us. Like it's not like we don't we don't know. Like I'm sure people come in the first time didn't sale. They don't realize they're getting stuff ready for the sale and they're seeing like they, like you go on like the vendor center site right now, right? Like certain titles like around thirty four dollars or, or you know thirty one dollars that type of thing. But the actual like in, in Canadian dollars I'm doing now, and the actual price of them is actually much more than that, because uh, they're already on like a, on la, already on like sort of a, uh, thing. So yeah, Dad, what do you think is are, are the top? Franco ones out of this one. See, I said, and he may not agree with me, uh, which is cool. But I said like the like out of the I didn't say the new ones, but out of the older ones, uh, the Saul de Miranda ones, uh, Vampire Lesbos, which I do like better than the Count Dracula. But Count Dracula's there too, and uh, and She Killed Nexus. I like those. Those are the Franco ones that I really enjoy. I don't have the was the two female spies in flowered panties. Which initially, by the way, came with an actual pair of flowered panties. Uh, doesn't anymore, but it was like one of those like kind of gimmick bundles that they had. Um, but I have I haven't seen that one. Has anybody seen that one? Because it's unique. It's definitely unique. Everything's back in stock, but some things are just very limited, and that's the thing. They don't have a warehouse to haul stuff from. The to replenish the stock so that's so if you're really looking at a title and it's something that that would look like it was it was basically gone uh and it, it looks it looks like it's coming back yeah just go to grab that stuff because like if it's one that you that you looked at and, and before and said oh this is out of stock and all of a sudden it's back in stock now uh, that's probably a limited stock one, which doesn't mean it's not going to come back again. It just means that it may not come. It's probably not going to come back again during the sale. So um, it's a race, guys. It's a wild, 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 wild race. Did you? Do you, Peter, have the panties that came with it? That is so cool. 
I did not know that was a thing until like I looked online actually a few days ago and found out that was a thing. Thirty percent off the black, black Blu-ray cases. Nice. Hey Wolf, welcome back, man. Got a sequel to Black. Uh, oh, well, you're talking about Adam, sure. It, the game is a double feature, so I'm guessing it does. Franco's stuff is different, but you got to understand, uh, and I've, I've spoke with, with Logan about this, actually. Uh, guys like Franco, uh, and, you know, back in the day, these are guys that worked with, with the classic. These are guys that worked with, uh, with guys like Orson Welles and people like that. Uh, Franco is a great director. It's just Franco loved films. He loved films a lot, uh, to his detriment, uh, that, that he just wanted to be filming all the time. Like, he definitely wanted to be filming all the time. And... Sometimes that meant he just made some stuff that wasn't always the greatest. But uh, you kind of, when you, when, you, when you get into Franco, when you get into the Fulci type guys, and they're very different, by the way. Uh, you, uh, it tends to be, there's, you get hooked. Like, you may not like everything, but uh, one that I will say, and I, I think with Adel Griezmann on this one, uh, Devil's Honey, Lucio Fulci, fantastic release, fantastic film. Uh, not what you expect for Fulci, from Fulci, though. Like, know that. Don't expect to buy Devil's Honey and expect a gore fest. Or, uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a film, it's a serious film that talks about grief and loss and relationships and reflecting on what, a relation, what your idealized version of a relationship is and the actual reality of it. So if that interests you, uh, yeah, really good title. You need to reboot your computer for the sale? Good luck, dude. Uh, hopefully you get, get everything that you need. But Devil's Honey is one that, re that really like surprised me. Uh, it was a film that was put out before uh, by somebody else, actually. Uh, full sheet, like Franco wrote the script to it. Uh, the film was, was, was filmed. And he was sick. He got really sick. He was supposed to do it. Uh, he got. He was in the hospital for like a, for, I think around a year. Uh, and uh, basically, when he got out, he saw the film. He didn't like what they did, and he made his own. Devil's Reign is fun. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's insane. It's got a great cast. You got William Shatner in it. A Tom Skerritt, I think, is in that one as well. Uh, you, Ernest Borgnine. Yeah, John Travolta got a small part in uh, in the Devil's Reign. Uh, Horror of Party Beach. I know a lot of people are going to say, eh, but Horror of Party Beach, fun little monster film. Like, hands down. Like, it, it's not like, it's not reinventing the wheel, but Horror of Party Beach is a really fun film. <clears throat> Devil's Reign, 100%. Recommend that one. Like, so I was, see, I didn't find it bad, but I mean, like, if you say bad in a good way, okay, I agree with that. But to each his own. I mean, the way it is is that everybody's got their own stuff. <clears throat> and William Shatner, like when you, there's a part in the film, I uh, wouldn't want to give it away, but let's just say you can see Michael Myers sort of in this film in a certain scene. You guys, like, Dad, you know what I'm talking about? Um, then uh, yeah, you, you kind of kind of get where the Myers mask kind of came from. That's a neat double feature with, all right. Criterion Closet or Severn Sailor. I love them both, but. For me, if I had a choice to go into one of those places, I can tell right now. Kubrick lover, he's going through the Criterion Closet. Me, I go down to the Severn Cellar. Uh, but both of them are fantastic places to go. I guess with the Criterion Closet, though, there's a larger range of movies to choose from. Uh, but uh, you, can't, you can't knock the Severn Cellar, man. Because <laughs> they do some great stuff. I will not be consuming slipcovers. Uh, Although I love the slip covers and I got stuff coming, actually, right after I did a video on here, uh, I got a uh, contacted by uh, by Death Bomb, and you guys know I did a trade with Death Bomb before. We're doing another one, so uh, I know you're not here right now, but you probably see it's after Death Bomb. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm getting four Vinegar Syndrome titles that I really need, thanks to him, and one of them is out of print, so that's actually kind of cool. Well, the cover's out of print, the movie's not. But I'm not like a, I don't really look at slipcovers. What are some Severin hidden gems? That's a good question, actually. It really depends, Alan, on, on the type of stuff that you're into. Wild Beasts, I don't know. I think it's, 
that's kind of a mono style title if I remember correctly but I really don't know Wild Beasts I haven't seen it myself um, now there is a couple mono, if you like mono films Wild Wild World of Jane Mansfield should be in there I'm not sure if it's going to be on half price though and uh, Mondo Bolorado which I have not seen maybe my dad saw it but it is a mono film and it is like narrated by a Boris Karloff so that's something to uh, to look at as well there's gonna be some decent stuff and a lot of like really cool like Jallo stuff and foreign stuff uh, that you're gonna that you're gonna want to look into Deadline, you know it is Deadline. Yeah, <laughs> Deadline's the one. You know I love Canucks Plantation Bingo. And Deadline is such a such an an insane film. Uh, I I definitely got on it. Did you see the stickers out? Did you see the? Did you guys see the last sticker when they showed up? The last sticker, because the last sticker on the uh, on the on the Severance Sale is from Andre Bianche's uh, film Burial Ground, and it's. The, the little kid that kind of looks like well it's supposed to be a little kid it's an adult really uh he kind of looks like a a, sh a a that they took Terry Argento and put him in the wash and he shrunk down uh, <laughs> that's what the kid looks like um there's a scene with the mother uh you know the scene I'm talking about owl uh yeah that scene is going to be a sticker devil's honey scene with the saxophone that's also a sticker so if you're interested in stickers and the sticker packs definitely <clears throat> worth checking out Jack Frost bring slip covers. Peter Barks bite. Massacre Central. I did not have it. Amy, is that coming out finally? Because for those that don't know, Massacre Central High is a favorite of mine that I've been waiting to see come out for ages. Uh See, I told you, man. It's like it's like having consumed slipcovers. Well, I do have a lot of slipcovers. Uh, I Snaps is working on it now. Please, they've been working on it for so long. I'm hoping that's finally coming out. Uh, the now, Snaps does take a long time to do stuff. Now, to be fair, like let's be honest, Snaps does do good quality, really good quality stuff. Look at their release for uh, for Suspiria. Excellent and the prom night never looked like that before and per curtains too so uh it does take them a long time but when it comes out it's usually worth picking up and massacre central highs i think one that a lot of a lot of us here will definitely get the kindred that's one that's coming out actually from them Deadline is definitely like one of the ones that I'm that I'm excited about. I haven't watched any of my vinegar streams that I got yesterday because we finished off like uh, we're watching Nancy Drew. That's the there's the truth right there. We just finished Nancy Drew. It's actually way better than I expected. Did I like the movie? I love the movie Popcorn. Uh, I love the backstory bit Popcorn just as much as the film. Uh, if you haven't picked up Synapse version of Popcorn, guys, great. And uh, it's it's got some great like special like features on it because the thing about popcorn it was originally going to be directed by Alan Ormsby and had a completely different lead actress in uh, like in in the role and both the lead actress and the and the director got fired. Interesting story. It's all on the uh, on Snap stuff, uh, Blu-ray of it. My favorite like uh, what's what's my favorite slipcover? Uh, I don't know actually um, I really like Demon Wind old Dracula uh, ask my dad because uh, my dad hopefully you're still here dad old Dracula that's one my dad knows that's one uh, it's a different film uh, it's a comedy it's David Niven and uh, it's uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if it will play so well today but basically what it is is he's uh, and uh, dad definitely correct me if I'm wrong his, it's like his, his bride right who has like uh, an, an injection 
like uh, like basically a blood transfusion, but uh, it caused her to change color. Uh, like she got, I guess, soul man, except not just, but actually she is like played by a, by a different actress. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's about all I can say on that one. Summer's a pro I'm not quite sure. Ice Cream Man, good cover. I don't have that one. So. I think my dad maybe went to bed or something like that. Or he's gotten ready, getting ready for the sale. Because he's been quiet for a while. Oh, no, he's here. Hammer Stars. Yeah, it does have some Hammer Stars on it. So you got to own it. My dad's the biggest Hammer fan in the world. Like, hands down. Frank and his pals. Do you, do you think it looks awesome? I'm not quite sure about it. Like, I really don't know, man. It looks, it looks fun, but I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, Nine Lives is your favorite slip? Good slip. <laughs> well, his dad jealous of my collection. Uh, I don't know about that. Like, my dad had, like, the big collection first, and I just got a collection, like, later on. Um, but at one point, my, my dad's collection was just as big as, as what I got here now, I'd say. Uh, it, or at least it definitely seemed the way to me. Extra 3. Such a strange film, though, man. But the Extra series is a weird se series. It's a fun series. It's a weird series. Uh, definitely something that's not me for everybody. Else. But Frank and his pals, yeah, it does. I mean, I can see a lot of people buying it. I can, I can see this one. Uh, it was, it will go, like, will, will go for sure. Is Gwendolyn good? <laughs> Depends on what you mean by good. I think it's fun. And Tiny Kane is cute. Uh, the film, it is like, it's definitely like a throwback to the old Republican ser Republic serials. That, that's kind of what it's doing. And, you know, it's, this, it's actual full title is Gwendolyn and the Pears of the Yik Yak. Uh, so uh, it's, it's definitely kind of doing that kind of thing. It, it's a weird film. It's got like these, do you like bondage and fetishism? Because they're, that's, that's going to be in Gwendolyn. Uh, you're going to get that in Gwendolyn. <laughs> it's, so uh, if you, friends, were a really big fan of the early Wonder Woman comic books, you're in, in for Gwendolyn. We had that. We're definitely moving nuts. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to get that. It was, and, and even at its silliest, still better than Fifty Shades of Grey. Just putting that out there. That's the thing. It was sold out before. It's not going to be sold out now. But like you said, uh, for some of the th items that were sold out that are there now, there's limited copies. Still selling. I do think they're still selling copies of, of Burning Moon. Now, uh, Burning Moon, by the way, guys, uh, Bloody Moon, you mean, right? I think you mean Bloody, Bloody Moon is a Franco slasher film. So uh, if you like slasher and you like Franco, uh, that's definitely going to be one of the more horror-oriented slashers. Uh, more, sorry, one of the more horror-oriented horror Franco films that you're going to see on Severin's website. It's going to be ways down because it's one of the earlier releases. Much like, you know, I'm sure like uh, Axe Kidnap Coed is going to be on sale as well. Yep, that has been a couple streams with me, actually. And as soon as we, because I can get over to... Uh, to see him again, we'll, we'll, we'll do more. I'll convince him. I do have a cool dad. I'm lucky that way. Oh, the Burning Moon is, is inner vision. Okay, sorry, I got confused. I was thinking of Bloody Moon, which is like a Franco slasher film, which is like there. <laughs> is that on Bloodhook? I don't think it does. Uh, that is a, one of the most like one slip covers. On, uh, from Vinegar Syndrome. It was put out by, of course, by one of the guys from Mystery Science Theater. <clears throat> Jim Malone. So, uh, if you're a fan of Mystery Science Theater, it's the guy that, uh, that kind of made the original guy leave. The best host for Mystery Science Theater. shipping options separate separate checkout i like to say i hope i'm right uh that you know if you get grab something that's really limited like go in and then you come back and you do like another order to get it over to the to that threshold 
another thing, if you are, let's just say you got $200 worth of stuff or whatever, uh, please make sure when you go through the checkout, it doesn't automatically put it on free shipping for you. You got to go manually go in and like click on that free shipping option. So uh, I know people made that, had that issue in the last sale. As they said, but I bought the right amount of stuff. How come I don't have free shipping? Because you got to manually, manually go in and like click free shipping because it automatically goes to the other shipping. And <laughs> Penga! Did Seven release any rough back sheet? Uh, no, not that I know for. But uh, <clears throat> do I think it'll be as crazy as the vinegar syndrome sale? It's getting, I mean, initially horror, I didn't think so. But I will say uh, it's, it's getting there. And I think what's helped it is aside from the fact that like they did the opposite of Vinegar Syndrome, these like slowly announced the, the releases rather than like let, let them be secret. But the fact that there's some limited stuff that was out of print, uh, things like the Blood on Satan's Claw, uh, you know, 10 copies of Hemisphere Horrors, uh, stuff like that, that's going to get, that's definitely going to like push traction to there. It's obviously they don't have anything, don't have rad. Um, but you know, again, that's the thing, rad's not, wasn't, it wasn't for everybody, it was for 12,000 people. I hope it doesn't crash. I mean, Severance had issue with that before. We have all been through the, the glitches on the website. So uh, I'm hoping that they've worked that out. Uh, so that we're not like trying to get orders to go through and just not having having to work well. Initially, I hadn't planned to do this video tonight. What I was going to do initially, well, what I was going to do initially was like me and Logan were going to do a video, and now you guys would be talking. Uh, but uh, I had planned to uh, to do like kind of like the film, like when I was actually uh, making the order. But uh, it's later now, so I won't get that done this time around. The Vinger Syndrome glitch. Oh, the Vinger Syndrome glitch was like the best thing for me. Uh, if anybody does remember during the Vinger Syndrome sale, when everybody woke up the next morning, all the new releases and all the stuff were looked to be sold out. It said sold out on all the new releases. All the Vinger Syndrome archives all showed sold out. And uh, because of that, a lot of us panicked, me especially because I collect the VSAs. And my better has said when they found out that there was something wrong with it and it was coming back, my better half said, you know what? Make sure you don't miss out on those VSAs. You collect that stuff. It's a, well, the one thing you've collected that you haven't missed any on. Just buy them right. We can't really afford it, but buy them right now. We'll figure it out. So uh, I got that and I got Olivia too, which is called Prizy there in the UK, guys. Mostly Order of Seven Titles. That's what I'm looking at at Horror. I'm looking at the order titles. All new release shows out of stock. And I probably wouldn't have got those new releases if it wasn't for that. Those VSAs, that, or, or Olivia, if it wasn't for that. Like, wouldn't have gotten this time around. And, I w and uh, one of them actually did sell out. I do own Deem. Oh, no, oh, Dad? Dad, you own Deem win, win with the slipcover? The lenticular, the sexy one? Dad didn't do the vinegar shrimp sale this time around. He was actually doing the arrow sale. Any must-haves? Yeah, there you go. What if you could, if you could pick one title coming out of the Severance sale right now? I want to know everybody's answer. One title. If you pick like one title, or just two, two if you want to. <clears throat> what we, what you, what's, what's your go-to? What is one that you, you know, you want? That you're saying, okay, I want this. For some people, it could be, you know, it, it could be the wax mask. It could be the, yeah, there the Fulci film. Somebody wants the Fulci film. Somebody could look for the, for the Franco stuff. Somebody out there might be wanting to grab the box set, the buys next door, great release. That's when Dino would like that, uh, the buys next door. Um, excellent film, a bit of a, it's a thriller, and it's got Maxwell Caulfield and Charlie Sheen. Strange Vice to Miss Ward, Max, Wa Max Wask, Wax Mask. I love your. I made Dad watch things. I'm pretty sure Dad didn't make you watch things. 
If I haven't, we're watching it, man. Frank of Lena Romay, yeah. Beyond the Darkness, the Other Hell. Do they still have those? My dad said the creature from the black. Oh, good. Oh, good. Good remembering, Alan. Uh, yeah, I think it is. My dad's a huge creature from the Black Lagoon fan. <clears throat> Strange Vice missed the word. It won't be on sale price, but it will, it will be there. And uh, it's a uh, it's a really, really, really good like film. Edward Finnick did it, and uh, I think it's George Hilton too, right? Hey there, Captain Orr. But yeah, um, Combat Shock is definitely a print. I'm actually excited because I ordered the, uh, what was the one? Uh, oh yeah, the Umberto Lenzi set. And like there's a comic with that. So that'll be my first comic. Like, and it's like these photo, photo comics that they do. Oh yeah, Enigma. Dad, you got Enigma, right? The 88 Films version of it. I'm pretty sure you do. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I saw it at your place. Is Enigma good? Because I, I got asked this a lot, and I don't remember that like Fulci film. Now I'm grabbing the devil's honey. That sounds so wrong, but I love the way you said it, Jerry. <clears throat> devil's Rain's a really good one. You <laughs> stars this. Yeah, I can understand that, man. Though, to be fair, you're an Australian. I love Australia. I would love to go there. Changing's a great release. A Wild Beast, uh, I don't know much about that one. <clears throat> I've heard negative things about the, uh, about the Fulci doc. It's, it's interesting. I mean, it's... You, here's a, here's a, a documentary that's done kind of, kind of differently. Threads, I kind of want, but right now, I'll be honest with you, Warlock. Uh, I don't know if I could buy Threads right now. Like I don't know if that level of depression is something that 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 I, I that I could do uh, because man, uh, like I can watch the news and like oh man, <laughs> but Threads is an excellent film. Like i like if you're from North America and you've never heard of Threads, for instance, uh, the the North American version of that like it's not the same film, but the it's 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 type it would be the day after. So if you've ever seen the day after. Uh, then uh, it's it's about like the after effects of nuclear war, the, the you know the nuclear holocaust. Uh, well, uh, Threads is the UK uh, version. It's a better version actually. Uh, the oh, day after is good too, but Threads is definitely it's it's brutal. It's it's a brutal film. Darn it. Yeah, that's true. We do. Drive-In Massacre. I actually like that one. Uh, one thing I like about Drive-In Massacre, and I'll say this, is, is that it's, it was done by a guy that actually worked in law enforcement. And it's obvious by the procedural aspects that it takes. Um, and for me, that's, that was a plus. That you know, was a big plus. Is that lenticular cover still around? Let's that with lenticular cover, or do they still have that? I'm a sucker for lenticular cover. I like shiny stuff. Uh, it's, it's true. <clears throat> uh, but uh, I... Uh, Driving Mask was your first VHS rental. I kind of thought it was Blood Beach. Or what... The one, I know That was early, wasn't it? Or was that your first DVD rental? I know Blood Beach was early on. That was like one you had early on. Wild Beast is a several one. Of course, Killer Crocodile is there too, by the way. The Killer Crocodile and Killer Crocodile too, so there's going to be a double feature there. Trying to get Skinner. Skinner's a great release, Andy. Well, the Lenticular for, for uh, Sleepy. <laughs> hey, locked. Uh, the Lenticular for, uh, for Rad isn't really meant to give like a. It's just, you know, easy on the eyes type of thing with foil on the other side. Uh, I like it. 
So I don't PCP. So that's what it's about. Uh, I don't know a lot about Wild Beasts. I don't think, think I've seen it, actually. But Zoo Animals on, on PCB sounds like an awesome plot. I totally forgot about Kill Crocodiles. I owned that one. And I did like Kill Crocodile and Kill Crocodile, too. I think they're really fun releases. Any fun on the Mondo? I do have the Mondo Widow collection, actually. I like Mondo films. Uh, they're an, definitely an acquired taste. They're not for everybody. If, if you don't like Mondo films, what Mondo, uh, Mondo Widow is not going to change your mind. If, you, uh, if you're already into Mondo films and you're collecting that type of stuff, go for it, man. Dad has the hard banana has the hard banana edition. That's Hot Nights of Linda. Yep, thirty four dollars. So half off should be seventeen dollars. And that's the neat thing. There's no guessing. There's no wondering. Okay, what's the MSRP? If a movie's twenty four dollars, that movie should be twelve dollars. If a movie's eighteen, it was is is you know it's $15, that movie should, should be seven fifty. <clears throat> but there's going to be some neat stuff in the, in the sale. It's going to be some really fun stuff to look at. But that being said, it's that time, guys. It's, it's getting closer to the sale time, about an hour or so away. Uh, I hope you guys all have a fantastic sale. Dad, thank you for coming in. One of these times, maybe we can... Come on, together, even if I gotta do it the when I once I figure it out with Logan, well, maybe we can stream or something. I am Aaron. <clears throat> this, this here, this is my movie library. My vice is almost gone. Thank you all for coming in. Thanks that, for my dad for, who, who came in tonight. I really appreciate that. Um, and all you guys, you're at the cult of cinema. You guys rock. I will see you soon. I'm going to go up and look at this. Well, look at the blanks page. That's eventually going to be a sale. And uh, get some tea because you know what time it is, guys. It is time for tea. Have a great night.